So let's talk about all the creepy faces that have been popping up on the Salgan Twitter world uh, recently. Um, it seems like most of the videos I'm recording right now are doing a lot of uh, work around different layers of Salgan. So within Salgan, Salgan's model, you know, there's 16 layers. Um, each layer is usually represented by a different um, sort of pixel value, 4x4, 8x8, 16x16, those sort of things. So when we looked at network bending, um, network bending was manipulating the image or image structure of each of those layers, right? So we were able to manipulate stuff at the 4x4 layer um, and get really big global changes, or we were able to manipulate um, the high, like, you know, uh, 16th layer, which is that very top layer, and get very much, like, just basic detail types of things. So uh, Justin Pickney, who is um, Buntworthy on Twitter, has made a notebook called Network Blending. Um, yes, the names are sound the same, but they are slightly different. Um, and what his network blending thing does is it basically takes um, the weights of one model um, and sort of maybe trains, takes that model weight up until, you know, the third or fourth layer. And then after that, it applies the weights of another layer, or sorry, not another layer, another model. Um, so when you mix these things together, what you get are some pretty weird things, right? So in the case of uh, Justin's very initial samples, it was um, blending FFHQ with his, um, like a globe model, right? So you've got these kind of crazy structures where, you know, these look pretty pretty straightforward, but you'll see that like some of the faces have a little bit more of that round structure to them. If you, uh, you know, really maximize that, you get some almost really circular faces and you quickly realize why faces are not circular. Um, and then, you know, this is getting even crazier, right? It's just applying just a little bit of the, the skinning of texture, quite literally skinning, um, on top of a uh, really round face. And here's, you know, basically where it's pretty much just like face noise, that sort of thing. Um, so there's a bunch of really cool examples on here. Dorn Adler um, took the FHQ model and then it applied sort of, I believe, the... Um, the cartoon layers on top of it, or maybe it was vice versa. Start with cartoons and then added uh, faces, um, so you get this almost like three D rendered, like Pixar style rendering. Um, some really interesting stuff here, um, where he goes also into playing with it a little bit more. I've also seen um, so Arfa has done stuff with his fox model to get some kind of funky furry faces, um, and I'll do something similar in just a minute. So I definitely recommend checking out Justin's work. Justin also has a really great repo of like a bunch of style gam models that are pre-trained that you can just download and, and work with. Um, so lots of really helpful, helpful stuff there. So make sure you, uh, you grab his repo. Um, next, we're going to obviously move into that folder and we're going to use TensorFlow 1 since we're using style gam and almost all, tens uh, almost all style gam versions uh, that are TensorFlow based require TensorFlow 1. And we're going to install a dependency that I haven't used before. It's called Typer. Not sure why we'll need it, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Um, and then let's take a look at the uh, arguments we're going to use inside this blend models file. So again, you, you need two different pickle files. You're going to use one for what we would call the lower resolution uh, side of things. So this is basically like what you start from. And then at the high res, you need another pickle file. And this is where like you'll pull those high level details from. Resolution, we'll talk about this in a minute, but this is basically at what layer are you switching between the two models? Um, so it could be at the 8x8 layer, the 16x16 layer, that sort of thing. So this is looking for like an integer number of 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. Um, level and zero. So I believe this is, um, if you look at how the, the layers are structured, I believe there's a convolutional block before and after, um, sort of at each layer, or there's like a one coming in and one as you leave. So I think it, this is probably saying like which of those layers are you picking from, I believe. I could be wrong there. If, you, if I'm wrong, let me know in the, in the comments, please. Um, second, blend width and out, uh, I've actually haven't messed with blend width. I'm not sure um, what exactly this does. I think it probably has something to do with as the, as the size changes. Are you just hard switching or are you doing some sort of um, smoothing there? Um, we'll play with this and sort of see what happens. Um, next, output grid. So this is if you want to output images, um, which we'll do in just a minute. If you want to take a look at those, this is the path to output. Uh, seed is if you want to change up your randomness. So in this output grid, um, I believe it's three by three. So there's nine total images. If you don't want those, um, you can just, uh, or like I guess the images that apply are being generated from this random seed. So if you want to change out those images, you can do that using the one like in a seed integer. Um, output pickle, so this is, we're going to look at how to actually export these. So basically, 
because of this process, you can just output your pickle, right? Because all it's really doing is seeing the weights um, of one pickle at a lower level, and it's taking the weights of a higher pickle or another pickle at a higher level and sort of mashing them together. Um, last is verbose, so if you want to output um, all of your, um, you know, error checking, debugging, that sort of thing. And here's a little bit more about just sort of just in what, what, when you open this model, uh, the link that I'll give you is going to work off of his um, pickle files, so you can sort of start and see from there. But yeah, he was pulling these off of um, this globe thing. Uh, here we've downloaded some of the pickle files. Um, I'm using wget just to, I think these are both being downloaded from Justin's um, StyleGAN2 repo. Um, so I tried this with Pony's original, this is Arf Arfa's Pony's model. I tried it with that and um, the StyleGAN model, didn't really find that it worked that well. Um, I think that's probably because Pony's was pre-trained off of his furry model, um, which I think therefore doesn't, basically I think one of the things that we're finding about these is that for some of these blending techniques to work well, you need to have pre-trained or transfer learned off of the like previous model and also not have it trained too far away from the thing. So, you know, maybe we're talking 100, K, 100 ticks in or something like that. Um, so what I actually did is I'm going to use FFHQ and then I'm also going to use my bone bone model, which was trained on, on runway, um, off of FFHQ, off of FFHQ, uh, but it wasn't trained for that long. It was, you know, I think in, in runway parlance, it was probably like 6,000 steps or something. So uh, now we'll load this up. We'll run this command, which allows us to display these things. Um, so there's two ways to actually run this uh, notebook or like this command. There is uh, just the command line bash script, which means that what you do is you pass it in your first model, your second model, and then the layer at which you want to have them switch, and then also like what the outputted output file should be. Um, Justin's also included a really handy little script here um, in this cell. And this, what this does is actually like gives you a image at each layer. So basically, if you want to sort of play with this and sort of see like what does everything look at, you know, eight by eight, sixteen by sixteen, those sort of things, you can run this script. So what I did, um, just so you're aware, is you just need to edit. I think um, this line. So just this one is your first model, so your low level model. This is your higher level model, um, and then the resolution is just being pulled from here. So I would definitely recommend running this cell. Um, just because it's going to help you sort of visualize these things a little bit. So I've already done this. This Running the cell does take a little while. I think this probably took me about 30 or 45 minutes. Um, another thing to note is that because I'm using a 1024 by 1024 model, I added two additional layers to this. So um, when you first open Justin's notebook, you'll probably see something like this. Um, this is because at 256, which is the model that he ran it at, um, you don't really want that, like you don't need that last layer because that last layer is just going to basically give you the exact same model you've already done in, the, in this first uh, iteration of your pickle. So I'm going to leave these in here. Um, this is for a 1024 model. If you had a 512 model, you would remove that last layer. So what's happening here? So as this runs, it's going to take our first model and it's going to take the weights of that up to um, this first resolution. So in the first case, it's going to take FFHQ and just, just the weights from it up until the eighth the eight by eight layer. So what we're going to find, and we'll look at the examples in just a minute, is that it's going to be pretty much just like outlines or like big shapes of people's faces. And then immediately after that, it's going to pick up bone bone. And as you get further and further down this list, you'll see you get more of FFHQ and less of bone bone. So uh, I'm not going to run this because it did take 30 to 45 minutes to generate all these layers. Um, but let's just go take a look at the samples. So at the eight by eight layer, um, you'll see here you have pretty much just the outline and the shapes of people's faces. And then Bone Bone just sort of slapped or smushed inside of them. Um, so in this case, you've got Bone Bone and sort of like a hat outline, um, you know, some other just like, they're pretty creepy, not gonna lie to you. Um, but it's like really like fully almost Bone Bone completely, except for this like very basic structure, right? You can sort of see the person's outline here um, as a body shape and then Bone Bone is sort of like Cats are fluid, so bone bones kind of like filled in that space. Um, at the 16 to 16 layer, you start to get in a little bit more appeals faces, but you also sort of get like cat as Rasta hat or like cat wearing like, you know, lots of like dreadlocks um, and just like cats as hats and lots of fur faces. So again, not the prettiest thing. Um, here at the 32 by 32 layer, you get sort of this um, human faces with like very furry faces. Um, because Bone Bone is, has a lot of fur, you get um, 
a lot of fur textures on these faces. Uh, again, not my favorite looking images. I hope you're not watching this at night um, before bed. Um, if so, I watch, watch something funny after this. Uh, as, so again, as we go up higher and higher, you see, you're going to see more and more of the human side of these things and then also just get a little bit more of the fur patchiness. So this is like very much like texture and detail. And as we get to 128, it's almost color, right? So like very ashen color uh, faces because bone bone is gray. Um, and when you hit 256, like I can almost, I almost can't even tell what's different here. Um, maybe a little bit of texture. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy though. And at 512 by 512, this is probably very similar to what the 1024 by 1024 layer would be. Um, so again, you know, most of the time, and this is true of like almost all these models that you play with, whether it's network bending or this, I find you want to play with really early layers to start with because you're just going to get the most interesting and unique sort of shapes out of those. Um, but your mileage may vary and you may find that different models give you different looks and feels and you should definitely play with them. That's why I think this cell in particular is really great because it helps sort of you know, you would have to normally do this like by hand with each of these layers and that sort of thing. So this is a nice little convenience function. So I'm really happy that Justin added that. Last thing here is that if you want to create your pickle file, so if you want to generate a pickle file out of this, um, you'll again give it this uh, bone bone, or sorry, like you'll again provide it sort of a uh, low model, high model, the resolution you want to have it switch at, and then you can use output dash pickle. Um, and this is going to generate your pickle file. So when I ran this, um, I, and again, one thing to note is that I name these FHQ bone bone. So I know first layer, second layer, or first model, second model, and then what layer I was at. So this is just like helpful if you want to generate multiple ones of these, make sure you remember to name stuff correctly. So you just run this and it generates a, a pickle file for you that you can now take anywhere with you. So you can now take this to um, the network bending um, re notebook to sort of mess with some things. You could take it to um, any of the manipulation notebooks we have or take it to flesh digressions or, you know, do linear interpolations through these things. So um, this is a really cool little notebook that allows you to play with stuff, but also make things you can then take elsewhere with you. So um, really, really cool stuff. I really appreciate that Justin put this together. Um, definitely check it out. Definitely play with it. Um, and also look at Justin's Twitter feed because I think he's got a bunch of other cool examples that I think are worth sort of thinking about and maybe playing with a little bit more. Um, so that's it for all this, all this video. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, uh, and I'll see you next time.